there you guys for you guys that want a quickie fitting a different ecu into an ls430 ecu plug it in obd2 connector under the dash bridge pins 4 and 13 turn the key on wait 30 minutes turn the key off unplug the connector turn the key on and start the car and it's that easy now there are some tricks to it there are things you can get wrong but that's the shortest version i can give you for you guys that want the long version you can watch the rest of the video hope that's helpful talk to you soon it's perfect weather food working on delicate electronics yeah, you get real moisture. It's, ra it's raining, it's wet, and it's cold. But, if you've been watching my other video, um, we're having bets to see whether this will work. Um, and I'm kind of doubling up a little bit, but I want to show changing an ECU in an LS430. I've got this one here. It was sent to me from the USA. It's full of water. It's yucky inside. But we want to see if it'll run. It does have an immobilizer on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab my LS430 and we're gonna plug it in and we've, we're actually all betting that it is gonna go. But I've gotta show how to align the immobilizer to put this ECU in a totally different car. So, I need a 430. Five speed, because it's got four screws. More screws than you're gonna get this week. <laughs> Six speed, two screws, five speed, four screws. Step one, fit ECU to the car. You know where the ECU is? No, no, I thought it was going to be under the seat. Nah, 430s are all in the corners. All the 3UZ ECUs are located in the front of the vehicle. Vehicle. In the left hand front of the vehicle. Vehicle. Okay, so you need to pop some covers off. Pop, pop, pop. You'll take this cover off and you'll take some screws off and we'll stop the water. Where's the water dripping? Because we really want, it's already, it's already full of water. Can't wreck it anyway, can we? Yeah. It's already full of water. <laughs> oh, this is wrong ECU. This is a different ECU. Now, now what we'll do is we're going to, we're not even going to disconnect the battery. You don't need to worry. Oh, okay, you're going to disconnect the two body plugs first. So you're going to disconnect these two. You're not, what am you're I not wearing nylon underwear? Uh, let me check. <laughs> Got to watch polyester. that static. Polyester. <laughs> <laughs> A poly polyester blend. <laughs> um, so we're going to unplug these two first. And then we're going to unplug those three. We've got a perfect drip. Is that drip coming off the roof? I would to say no. It's coming off here. Very good. Get rid of the dripping. Uh, yep. So you unplug those two first? Oh, you unplug these two first? No, those two. No, these two. No, you said those two. No, I said these two. I checked it on the, when I was sitting here. It's the two, it's the two that are out on the road. You unplug them first. Okay. These two. Okay. It doesn't actually make any difference. As long as the key's turned off, yeah. you're actually okay. The key's out of the issue. Yeah, so you're good. But yeah. I prefer these two because these are where your main battery, like your memory power is. Yeah, okay. And, but these are, you've got your earths. Okay. okay. So those are body loom. Yeah. No, nope. I like. These are for the engine loom. So it goes down here to the engine loom. Yeah. And now all three UZ cars, this is where the ECU is. So when we're doing swaps for them, Don't it doesn't there. go in the cabin. Mm. And so you're getting looms, right? And people go, I want the loom in the car, the ECU in the car, well wait a minute, it gets mounted under here. Yeah. To swap the loom around becomes a little bit more work. Yeah. But it's a better engine, it makes more power. Fuel pump resistor, fuse box, battery, that's the engine. Well, there's a fuel pump resistor. That's a fuel pump resistor. We'll better do another video on fuel pump resistors, eh? Right, so what I've done, and then I've got, with well, this plugged in, right, I've got this plugged in, and then we get the special tool. Yep. Toyota, it's got a special part number for it. Well, it's like 731138. <laughs> this is the upgraded version in orange. It's just not 53115. 
one, two, V. No, that's the split pin version. Oh, okay. That's the solid metal version. <laughs> okay. This is the, the flexible one. <laughs> is this done? We go inside the car. Um, can you just move those covers? Because I'm going to attempt to start it. Prove your point. It won't start. Well, you that's got... a start. No, that's a, it won't start. So it's, now it'll just crank. Okay. Key out. Key back in. Ooh. Got it? That's an emo fault. I M M O. Not, not E M O. Oh, okay. E M O. E -M -O. E -M -O. Yeah, all right. So it fires for a second and then it goes, no, you're not, you're not. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. That's not happening, man. So, we come inside, we take the key off. We move the key. Find the OBD2 plug. It says down here. Do you need a torch? Um, I do need a torch. Even though I'm a little fella, I still put the seat all the way back. Okay, we go over here. And we remove this unit here, which is my OBD2 unit that I use for going to my smartphone. Oh, okay. Okay, and we go under here, and it's upside down, is which that is a, dongle? a. It's another dongle. <sighs> you and your dirty dongles. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm just. Is this like the diagnostic port that's in the in the engine bay? So this is an OBD2. So, yep, yeah. you hold it. So I'm just popping it out. Just, it's not the easiest thing to pop out. And what I'm going to do, is I take this and I go into pin either four or five. It's fine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and thirteen. So, so was that nine and thirteen? Uh, no, sorry, thirteen, and either pin four or pin five. It's it's a ground. And I'm preferring pin four myself. Okay, pin four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, nine. So we've got eight along the top of the row. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's it. Okay. Oh, that was me. Okay, here's here's our port. So I've popped out, so the long side, we can't really show this, this is a really crappy day and it's, it's underneath here, so we've got eight along the top, top is the wide side, and then the narrow side, so I've gone one, two, three, four, and then this one's, uh, the rest of the top it goes to eight, we go nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, TC, pin thirteen, unlucky for some. Dash. Yep. Okay. Now the magic happens. Now the magic happens. Insert the key. Turn the key to the on position. You notice the dash is having a is doing a, being a Christmas tree. It's a Fitzgeraldine. Okay. And then we shut the doors. Up out of there. Oh, we check the time. 435 435 5 minutes past 5 yeah, we, we do something else we wait 5 minutes we make we make 30 minutes oh really 30 minutes man what is it doing in 30 minutes it's reprogramming to lighting the ECU okay. with the key oh. so th this is this is actually a real common thing with Toyotas. You do it with late Hiluxes, you do it with quite a number of vehicles. Holden's? Holden's not a Toyota. No, but you see quite a number of vehicles, I'm just throwing so, them out there. Models. Okay. Did I say vehicles? Yeah. Models. Alright. Toyota models. Okay. Toyota vehicles. It's all clear now. 
So when you switch back to this ECU, you're going to have to reconfigure it again? That is an excellent question. I don't know the answer. Okay. Right. Okay, so we come inside. Can you remove that wire? It's still a Christmas tree. Uh, is it not supposed to be? We turn... Oh, look. 504. Oh, it's supposed to say 505. How accurate do you think that timer needs to be? Oh, I'd say they wouldn't have it there for a, they'd have it there for a reason. No, well, that's just the normal clock. But why do you think they say half an hour? I think there's plenty of leeway actually in that. Okay. But I'm still going to wait for another minute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wait out there. Yeah. We probably should have turned the radio off. Oh, not the radio. The um, air conditioning off because it would have stopped draining the battery. We don't really don't want a battery to go flat while mm. you're doing this process. That's that's really bad. Yeah. 505. Shut it off. Shut it off. Leave the wire in. Leave the wire in. Okay. Once it's turned off, reach down and remove the wire. All right. You got that, folks? We remove the wire with keep, the key off. off. Yeah. See if that ECU is good, eh? Oh, we're not flashing. Holy moly! Holy moly! You got that? Woo! Now, I don't know whether we can just slip that other ECU back in. Okay, so let me just recap. So pin 4 or 5 and 13. Yes. Okay. So number 4, I believe, is the... Earth? Chassis ground. Okay. And I think five is the signal ground. I probably should have a look, but you're, what you're doing is you're putting TC, timing check, to ground. Timing check to ground. It's for, for the, you advanced guys. TC to ground. <laughs> you could take TC, as I said, but what, four or five are both grounds. You can actually watch videos on the internet they'll show you different wires but yeah. hey this one starts and runs and it worked and it works yeah. look a lot of people like they'll tell you how to do something but they were not going to show you the full-blown proof yeah so that's that rusty dirty do you want to take this home for the night no oh. i love the corolla you love your corolla oh, fuck yeah ah oh. toyota man well, this is a Toyota too. <laughs> it's just a flash Toyota. <laughs> Two flash for me, yeah. And it's braided. You know what I'm like. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> true. I, I, I'll rethink that, Richard. I, I'll take, take that back. <laughs> I, I, I'll just connect the traction control button so you can't find it. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay, now do we also want to whip that? Do you want to see? I do want to see, man. Okay. I do. All right. Okay. So we're going to take out the one that we just put in, just aligned with this car, and we're going to go back to the original. Well done. So it's the, the body plugs first. <coughs> and it's the engine plugs. No, other, other way. way. Yeah, okay. When you're disconnecting? Yes. And then reconnect the opposite. Correct. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're back to the original car's ECU. Yep. Let's see if it starts, eh? Let's do it. Stop. That's a no. That's a no. That's a hard no. That's a hell no. Wow. So do you need different keys? That's cool, isn't it? Hey? Okay. Right, plug, plug that one back in. Let's see if we our one that we just aligned before. Keys off. I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop this one in the car properly. Um, if that one does start again, and I'm going to do some driving on that. Yeah. Um, for about 
So and, uh, five kilometers. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then we're actually going to put the pops and bangs out of this man's car into it because he's, yeah. he's ordered a pops and bangs tune. Mm. Right. Why does everyone want those? So we've gone, this is the original one that no longer starts. This is the replacement one. That we just. Which we just, uh, just tried. Aligned via Kia Mobilizer. Yeah, mate. You feel like a sweetie. So it rewrites that whole key setup, eh? Yeah. Well, what's also interesting is it has it written this ECU's key to the chip in, in, in the car, or has it written this ECU to that key? Uh, Whatever it's done is, is it doesn't work with this one anymore. Yeah, yeah, I reckon it's the, this ECU to that key. As a guess. Not the key to the ECU. No. Because if it did key to ECU, this ECU would work. Yeah. So hopefully that's helpful. It's wet, it's cold. I've learned something. Uh, Shay's going to actually just bolt that ECU in. It does start and run. I'm still not going to send it back to the customer because I'm not happy with it. I'm going to do a deal on my replacement one. The ECU is in and it does drive. Uh, it's got the normal harsh shift problem that these have a hard shift one two is quite disgusting first thing in the morning so it's probably not the ideal ECU to be reflashing anyway until it's had some repairs but it does actually run it which is really really interesting This ECU also doesn't go as well as my, my normal one, my standard one. Uh, so, again, pointing that there are problems. I had a chat with a mate last night with regard to how many times we could uh, align another ECU to a car, and it's suggested it's, it's at least in the hundreds, probably in the thousands, so we should be just fine for putting multiple ECUs through this car. I'm actually um, heading back to the shop now, um, I've had my test drive, and we are going to put a pops and bangs tune in. Not everyone's into that, but uh, if you check out my other video on the reflashing and the pops and bangs, uh, we'll give you some details on that, and we'll be out soon for another drive in my car with uh, a little bit more noise coming out the back. Hope that's been helpful, talk to you again soon, catch you later.